Oklahoma is home to more than 200 lakes covering hundreds of thousands of acres across the state. But here's something you might not know. Every single one of them is man-made. Unlike other states with vast natural lakes, Oklahoma had to create its own. Why is that? What led to the creation of so many artificial lakes and what does it mean for the state today? To understand that, we have to go way back, millions of years back, to when Oklahoma looked nothing like it does today. Long before Oklahoma was covered in prairies and rolling hills, it was completely underwater. Around 300 million years ago during the Paleozoic era, a shallow sea covered what is now Oklahoma. This vast inland ocean was teeming with marine life, coral reefs, fish, and prehistoric creatures that dominated the waters. Over millions of years, the remains of these organisms settled on the ocean floor, compressing to thick layers of sediment. This process eventually formed the limestone, sandstone, and the shallow deposits that define much of Oklahoma's geology today. As tectonic forces shifted and the ocean receded, the land rose, exposing these ancient seabeds. This massive deposit of organic material left behind would later become one of Oklahoma's most valuable resources, oil. Because of its history as an ancient seabed, Oklahoma developed some of the richest oil reserves in the United States. When oil drilling began in the early 1900s, massive deposits were discovered underneath the land, fueling an economic boom. But while the ancient ocean left behind valuable petroleum, it did not create deep basins needed for large natural lakes. Unlike areas shaped by glaciers which carve out depressions that naturally hold water, Oklahoma's land remained relatively flat, with rivers and streams but no major lakes. Without this activity to carve out lakes, natural water storage was scarce. The only natural lakes that existed in Oklahoma were tiny, shallow, and only seasonal. Most are found in the form of oxbow lakes, small crescent-shaped bodies of water that form when rivers change course. But these are more like large ponds than true lakes, that left Oklahoma without any large, permanent natural lakes to rely on for water, agriculture, or recreation. So from the time settlers arrived, water was a constant challenge. Oklahoma's weather is unpredictable with long periods of drought followed by heavy rains. The state's rivers, well vital, weren't enough to support the growing towns, industries, and agriculture. Without natural lakes to store and regulate water, floods could devastate communities one year, and then a drought could leave them desperate the next. By the early 1900s, Oklahoma leaders recognized that something had to be done. If the state wanted to grow, it needed a reliable water supply. The only solution that they could see viable was to build these lakes. This struggle became even more relevant during the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. This devastating period of drought turned vast portions of Oklahoma into barren, dust-filled wastelands. Crops failed, livestock died, and thousands of families were forced to leave their homes in search of a better life. The Dust Bowl proved that Oklahoma's unpredictable climate marked by extreme droughts and sudden flood demanded better water management. In response, both state and federal governments recognized that simply relying on rivers and rainfall wasn't enough. If Oklahoma was going to survive and thrive, it needed a reliable way to store water. The 1930s and 40s marked the beginning of large-scale dam construction in Oklahoma, with support from federal programs like the Works Progress Administration and later the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the state embarked on an ambitious effort to create reservoirs. Dams were built on major rivers like the Arkansas Red and Canadian, blocking their flows and creating massive lakes. These reservoirs had one goal, to store water for drinking irrigation and industry, but they also helped control floods, preventing devastating destruction that had plagued Oklahoma's early towns. One of the first and most significant projects was Lake Texoma, completed in 1944. Formed by the Denson Dam on the Red River, it remains one of the largest reservoirs in the United States. It sets the stage for more lake constructions across the state, including massive projects like Lake Eufaula, Grand Lake, and Keystone Lake. By the 1950s and 60s, Oklahoma had fully embraced its identity as a lake state. New reservoirs popped up across the map, each serving a different purpose. Some lakes like Lake Thunderbird and Canton Lake were built primarily for drinking water. Others like Lake Tenkiller and Broken Bow became major hubs for recreation. These lakes transformed the state. Towns that once struggled with water shortages now had a steady supply. Farmers could irrigate their crops more reliably. Another major reason for Oklahoma's lake boom was energy. Many of the dams that created these lakes also generated hydroelectric power. The Kerr Dam formed on Lake Hudson and the Pensacola Dam formed on Grand Lake 
provided a steady source of renewable electricity. These projects did not only supply power to homes and businesses, but also fueled economic development. Industries moved in attracted by cheap and renewable energy. Small towns near lakes flourished with new jobs in tourism, fishing, and outdoor recreation. Today, Oklahoma lakes remain just as crucial as they were when they were first built. They supply water to millions and help regulate the state's unpredictable weather. They also continue to drive tourism and outdoor activities. But these man-made lakes also come with challenges. Since they rely on dams, they require constant maintenance. Silt and settlement buildup over time gradually makes lakes shallower. Many of Oklahoma's reservoirs are over 50 years old, meaning long-term upkeep and dredging are essential to keeping them functional. Climate change has also added new concerns. Drought conditions can shrink lake levels, while extreme storms can put stress on the dams. The balance between water use, conservation, and flood control is a constant challenge for state officials and water managers. So next time you're out on the water at Grand Lake, you follow our 10 killer, remember you're floating on history. These lakes did not form naturally. They were engineered to make life in Oklahoma possible. And before that, this land was at the very bottom of an ancient ocean shaping the very resources that built the state. Without them, Oklahoma would look completely different. This has been Towns OK, and if you made it this far, I truly hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and follow for more stories that shape our world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.